Hello and welcome to the final of these four short videos looking at the sample OTBI dashboards and reports that I've posted on Customer Connect. My name is Caroline Gladwin and I work as a solution consultant in the Oracle UK HGM team. In this final video, we'll be having a look at some of the more complex reports that use a union query. We'll then be looking at how you can add and extend content to these samples by creating a new page and adding some new reports and dashboards. So the first thing we're going to look at in this demonstration is to have a look at the use of a union query in some of the more complex reports. Now a union query can be really useful where you're wanting to maybe combine a condition where something has happened with a condition where it hasn't happened. So the example I'm going to use to take you through this is around performance documents and whether or not those documents have been created or not. So if I come into my performance document not created report, we can see an example of using a union query. Now the display of the results tab is a little different on a union query because on the left hand side it gives you the message saying that the information can't be displayed in effect because there's more than one set of criteria to display. Now this particular report is returning me any assignments that don't have a performance document associated with them. How is it doing that? So if I look at the criteria tab, let's have a look at how the report is set up. It's basically made of two separate queries. So the top query is going to return me a list of everybody I have who has an assignment. So we can see here the information that's returned is simply the assignment number and the conditions that are applied to the report. Now I do check that the person's start date is actually after the date that the performance document is valid, so hopefully I won't get people who shouldn't have this performance document anyway. What I then do is I have a second query, and this returns all of the people who do have a performance document of the type in question at the right pit time period. And then what I do is I use the union operator to do the minus between those two sets of data. So in reality, what I'm doing here is I'm taking all of my people and then subtracting away those people who've already got a performance document, which is why this report then returns me a list of assignments where there is no performance document created for that assignment. Now you'll notice where I've got my mouse pointing that you can do all sorts of different types of union operators. So intersections and unions are also supported. And if you're unsure how to add it to the report, it's using this icon over here on the right hand side. Now I'd recommend you take a little bit of time to work through these particular reports that use union operators and make sure you understand what's happening with them. There are also several examples in the succession area of the sample dashboards. Now the final thing I'd like to talk about in this video is about adding and extending the content that we've provided. And I'd like you to take you through an example of adding a new dashboard page with some content and talking about some of the things that you might wish to think about doing with your reports. So let's take a look at adding a particular dashboard page. The example I'm going to show you is adding a page around absence accruals. So what I've done is taking the standard layout of the dashboard pages that we've looked at, I've created a dashboard prompt that will go on the left hand side of the page and I've created a report that I want to have on the right hand side. So let's see how easy it is to add this new page to the existing sample dashboards. If I go up and have a look at the sample dashboards, then we can see the pages that already exist. So I want to add this one in after my absence tab. So here's my absence information and the way that I add a new page is by choosing the edit dashboard link. Once I'm into the dashboard designer, the first thing I need to do is to add the new page. So I'll click on the Add Dashboard page and I'm going to call this Accruals. I may then wish to put it in a specific place, so I can choose the dashboard properties to move the tabs around. So I'd like my Accruals to display between Absence and Profiles. So I'm going to highlight my Accruals tab, move it all the way to the front, and then move it back to between Absence and Profiles. I can also at this point choose some of the other page settings. Now if I want this page to look similar to the other ones, a quick way to do that is to go to the shared folders, custom, dashboards, and actually copy the content from one of the existing pages onto my page to get me started. 
So say, for example, I want to copy the information from the Absence tab, then I can basically just drag that onto my Accruals page and say yes. Now what this gives me is the basic layout of the columns and the sections. Now clearly I don't want the same content as I've got at the moment, so I can remove the existing prompt and all of the other reports and dashboards that are there to make sure that my page is basically of the right format but doesn't have any content in it. So you can see how easy it is to delete that content out. What I have in my accruals area is one prompt and one, dash, uh, one, and one report that I would like to include. So if I go down to where I've built that content, I find the folder that I've built my new content in and it's simply a question of picking up the content and dragging it into the appropriate area on the page. So there's my accrual prompt in the prompt section and here's my report, the accrual balance by employee. I'd like to drag that in twice because I'm going to take advantage of a technique I talked about in the earlier video of having the same report on the dashboard page twice but with a different view highlighted. Now I'm not going to need these two extra sections down at the bottom here so I can now delete those out and I've got the basics of the page that I want but I still need to update a couple of other things. So I don't want this page to be called the absence management summary I'd like it to be called the accruals management summary so I can simply update that textual area. And because I copied the absence page originally, that's why I'm not having to set up all of these different sections from scratch. On this top area, the accrual balance by employee, I'd like to make sure that it's showing the metrics view. So here I can see I can specify the metrics view. On the second entry, I'm quite happy for it to show the default compound, so I'll just leave that as it is. But what I would like is I'd like for this section not to be called absence breakdown, but instead to be called accruals breakdown. So I'll change the word absence and just type in my new title. You can see here how quick and easy it is to create a page when you start by copying another one. The other thing I'm going to do at this point, which I didn't have in any of the pages, but I thought it'd be interesting for you to see, is to drag across this folder icon and place it underneath the sections that I've already got. What the folder icon allows me to do is just point this part of the dashboard to a folder of reports, which allows the end user to just select a report and run it, as opposed to having to have everything displayed directly in the screen. It can be useful where you've got numerous maybe listing styles of reports, and it allows easy access to a number of different areas. So here we can see my accruals page folder, and I'm just going to specify that this particular folder icon points at that location and I'm going to ask for it to be expanded as standard. So we'll see how that looks now. If I just save this page away and then run, what I'm going to have is a dashboard page which shows me my accruals information and has the same basic layout and format as the other dashboards delivered in the sample information. So here we can see on the left hand side I have my selections. On the right hand side I have a textual piece of information for my summary, for my title, and I also have the metrics underneath and the supporting detail below that. We can see here I've produced a couple of reports that look at the number of days that employees have left to use on their accruals, and also down here at the bottom I've got a couple of additional reports around team absence balances, which I'll mention in a second. Now one of the things that's slightly different about this example and isn't specifically covered in the samples that I've provided on Customer Connect is the ability in the dashboard prompts to provide an area where people can enter some information simply by typing that value in. So here what I've got is I've got a dashboard that allows me to look at the extent to which my employees are taking their holidays early enough in the year. So I've specified a target that I'd like everyone to take at least one and a half days of holiday per month during the year. So that now that we're in June of this particular year, people should have taken nine days. And I'm then comparing that to where they are in terms of their remaining balances. And this chart on the right hand side here is being coloured accordingly. Now if I wanted to update that target, maybe I want everyone to have taken three days each month. Then I can simply overwrite the one and a half and click out of the box and it will then update the reports.
you can see that because I've now expected people to have taken 18 days of holiday by this point in the year, that all of the employees are now showing in red. You can include this kind of interaction on any of the dashboard prompts. It uses a technique called presentation variables, which I haven't covered in this video, but you can easily look up on the internet instructions on how to use presentation variables linked to a dashboard prompt. Now the final thing that I'd like to just mention on this particular dashboard is the folder information at the bottom, as this uses one more technique that you may find of use. If I open up the Team Absence Balance report, I'm logged in as a manager called Richard McIntyre. And what this report is going to look for is any holiday that's been taken within Richard McIntyre's team within the current year. And I've deliberately set it up such that Richard's team have not taken any holiday and therefore he's not able to see any information. But the way this report is built behind the scenes is that it understands who's currently logged into the system, it understands what the current year is and it therefore only brings back the relevant holiday. So let's briefly have a look at how that's set up and then lo let's log in as a manager who does have some holiday within their team and see that the report does return data for them. So first of all, let's have a look at the report. If I go to the report within the catalogue, then you'll be able to see exactly how that's been set up. So here's my team absence balance report, and it's using a couple of different techniques. If I have a look at the criteria tab, then one of the things it does is it limits the absence date to only be within the current year. So again, this is one of these filters that we talked about in the earlier videos that make reports flexible based on the time. Year is a standard function that simply returns the year of whatever date it's told about. The second condition enables us to limit this report to the person who's logged in. So what this is looking for is any absences where the manager of the person being absent is equal to the person who's currently logged into the system. So if I just edit that condition, you can see it's very simple to set up. You simply pick the standard column within the accrual real-time subject area called manager username, and you make that equal to a session variable called user. You can use this same technique on any subject area that has the manager username exposed. Once you've done that, the report basically checks prior to running who is logged into the system, what their username is, and then only returns absences for that particular manager. So let's have a look at that in practice. If I just sign out of the system now as Richard McIntyre, I'm going to sign back in as a lady called Cassandra Dale, who has some absences within her team. So here we are. You can see I'm now logged in as Cassandra Dale. She's a manager of a team who've taken some absence. It's exactly the same report as we were just looking at. So you can see here the team absence balance report. But this time, if I go in and have a look at it as Cassandra, then because her manager username matches some of the people who've taken absence, she gets returned to her her own team's view of the absence that's been taken. Now, this is an incredibly useful technique where you're trying to build, for example, a manager dashboard. You might want to limit all of the reports to only bring back the data for that manager's team. And this technique, using the manager username and linking it to the username of the person currently logged into the system, is a very effective way of delivering that type of information. So that ends this final video where we've had a look at the use of union queries in some of the more complex reports, which can be very useful where you're trying to combine a condition where something is true with a condition where it isn't. We've then finished off by looking at a couple of examples of how you might like to extend the sample content that's been provided. The example I used was around accruals and the ability to build a page quickly to be able to include a dashboard prompt that used a presentation variable to allow the end user to overwrite some numbers and do some simple scenarios. And then finally, the team absence report that limited the data that was returned to the manager that was currently logged into the system. And if that manager had no absence, it returned no data. But where the manager had absence, it returned the information for their particular team. I hope you found these four videos of use and that you're now in a position to take advantage of the value delivered by these sample OTBI dashboards. 
they have been designed to give you a quick start to delivering your reports and dashboards. Thank you for your time.